What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another Obsessed Auto Reviews. My name is Gary and this is the place to be if you love vehicles. Today we are looking at this 2019 Acura ILX A-Spec in this great exterior color. It's beautiful, I love the exterior. Um, but before I get going, big thank you to Acura, Silver Hill Acura, for letting us borrow this vehicle because without them, this video wouldn't have been possible. I planned on doing the new TLX today, but unfortunately I couldn't get access to it. It's super hot. As you know, people just want to always see it right now. It's pretty popular, uh, pretty, you know, hype right now. So, but at least we got this ILX for you guys this week. And hopefully within a week or next week, I have the new TLX up for you guys. Um, so the ILX, it's a pretty lackluster vehicle. I'll just start off with that. I'm a big Acura fan. But I will, I'm pretty unimpressed with this vehicle in terms of uh, what you get for what you pay for. Now, this thing came out in 2013. Um, it was, it came after the CSX, which most people don't know about in the United States because it was a Canada exclusive from what I hear at least. Don't at me, I did my research. Um, and at, their, at 2013, they decided to rebrand it as the ILX and they came out with, with a okay looking model. It was based off of the ninth generation Civic. Yeah, the ninth gen Civic, not the 10th gen, the ninth gen Civic. Um, and it used a 2.4 liter engine that the SI of that generation had. Um, then they did a facelift. They did two facelifts actually. The 14, 2015 when they did a, a facelift and then they again changed it after they had the new design language that they wanted to do. They decided to change the face again and uh, they put on the Diamond Pentagon grille, made it more aligned with everything else. And that was done, I believe, in 2019 where they changed the bumpers and the front rear sides. Um, and it looked much, much better than when it did when it initially came out. Um, anyways, that's a little history lesson for the ILX. Now, before I keep blabbering on, let's get started with the video and start talking about the uh, engine specs. Now, as I mentioned before, you had a 2.4 liter engine um, that was from the 9th gen Civic Si. Now that engine, it was a pretty nice engine. It's naturally aspirated. It makes 201 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. And that was all mated to an eight speed dual clutch transmission, which is a pretty smooth transmission in my opinion. Um, and it also uh, was mated only to a front wheel drive uh, powertrain so you couldn't get all-wheel drive with this it's only available in front-wheel drive and you know what it's okay for what it does um, surprisingly the 0 to 60 time is about 6.6 .6 seconds approximately around that range is what I was seeing that is not bad you know that is definitely not bad it is a little bit lower power but um, it definitely does do decently well right I'll show you guys driving clips uh, you know facing forward not the opposite way right now uh, later on but yeah so and that was the only engine spec and option that you had available, right? Now, let's take a look at the front for this. When they restyled this, or did the facelift, sorry, I keep on saying restyled because it looks so much different than it did when it came out. Um, you know, they, they changed quite a bit. And starting off the front end, you have your full LED headlights, LED daytime running light, low beam, high beam, turn signals, um, LED fog lights available on upper trims as well. Um, very nice diamond pentagon grill, big Acura logo, as big as my hand, just like the RDX. Uh, instead of the regular chrome, you would have dark finished chrome, which I like. You have the fake venting by the uh, LED fog lights, but most cars do, I guess. We just have to accept it nowadays. Um, but yeah, and then in the Acura sensor, the gigantic Acura logo, that's where all your safety systems are uh, housed inside of there. So. Um, but other than that, the entire front end, I really do like the look. I think it looks beautiful, especially with the A-Spec package. It looks really nice. Now you move on to the side, you had these nice shark gray wheels and they looked, the multi-spoke wheels, they looked really nice. So the A-Spec series had 18 inch wheels on 225 series tires. Anything on the lower trims would be a 17 inch wheel on 215. Obviously I like the 18 inch. A spec wheels. I think they look sporty, multi spoke, uh, beautiful design. The side profile itself, you had some nice 
uh, lines down the like the rear quarter area you can see it most around there um, but it did look pretty nice in my opinion um, one thing I do like is how the rear is kind of shortened it does obviously cut into your cargo space but it doesn't have a long rear end it uh, has a shorter rear end and I think it, it suits the car well you have a little shark fin at the top for your uh, radio and satellite uh, systems but moving on to the rear once again completely different from when it, what it initially looked like. Um, you had combination tail lights, so you had LED, um, you had the LED strip running, you had the, uh, but you had halogen uh, reverse and turn signals. So you had a single outlet exhaust and because this is the A-spec, you also had black lower diffuser um, trim, so have that black lip spoiler, which Acura is doing to all their A-spec models uh, that are sedans at least, which is just two, but um, they look nice. Um, and the rear looks nice as well. So anyways, we've talked about everything right now on the outside. Let's move on to the inside right now. Everybody, time to see what this interior is like. Go inside. Now, obviously, nothing's changed. 2021 is going to look the exact same. You have the same old switches. I think my Accord has the exact same switches for the windows. You have some leather stitching on uh, your door panel and your armrest. Aluminum accented door trim. Let me go inside and show you guys how it looks like inside. All right. So, you know, old school Acura steering wheel. I'm not really the biggest fan. Once again, I'm, I'm not surprised. I don't see too many new ILXs on the road. It's tough to spend this much money for what you get um, this is the old school older Acura steering wheel obviously the newer ones are gonna be different so once that new compact model comes in I'm really excited to see that down here you also see that you have your old traditional gauge clusters it does sound pretty nice from the inside at least maybe that's audio muffled in take a listen not bad not bad at all the talk of the room we don't like this double screen setup. Obviously it shows its date and there was nothing really showing why this would be more, um, you know, why you would spend more money on getting this. It's a pretty outdated system. If you're gonna get this, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough, tough thing for you. You have a silver accented engine start stop button. You have navigation that shows up up over here. Your audio, at least you have volume knob, hashtag save the knobs, you know I gotta say it. And one thing I really don't like about this though is the uh, the HVAC control. So right here you got to press for on and off, and like the, this this portion isn't touchscreen uh, at all. But you adjust your fan speed from down here. You have some control knobs for your temperature select. You have that same leather stitched handbrake shift knob with that crisscross stitch. You can see it looks nice. Heated seats, two stages for the front couple cup holders over here backup camera you can see you have a dealer plate going on over there but you know overall it's just it's just a very felt lined uh, glove box some gloss black with some silver accents i don't know guys like the only good thing about this i think are these seats leather stitched white piping on the top alcantara down the center that portion is perforated but nothing else this is basic leather very small door pockets like it is nice but for what you pay even a civic feels like it has better tech and almost equally the, uh, the same amount of uh, interior quality so i don't know guys once again i cannot stress how excited i will be for the new um the newer compact sedan that acro brings on with a totally new interior based off of the precision concept based off the rdx tlx mdx i can't wait but other than the interior i think this looks really nice if you are if you're a fan of this you know i'm not hating on the car i think it, it's a beautiful car from the outside and the inside if you're more of a, a simplistic person where you want just something simple uh some not without too much tech that might be your style then this is a, probably a great uh a fit for you but for me I think I would look at something else. All right, guys, time to go into the back seat. Sorry, it's really windy. Even the camera's moving around, you can see. Um, so I've adjusted the seat where I would uh, be comfortable in. This is super small, super tiny, unfortunately. Um, it's funny, they call the TLX the compact sedan competitor, but this is probably a subcompact then, competing against things like the A3, uh, the 2 Series, um, the A-Class Mercedes. So 
my front seat is set where I would have it if uh, I would be pretty comfortable. Um, you can see that your door panels have the nice same stitching on the uh, door panels with that leather, that white contrast stitching. Now, as you can see, I have no leg room, pretty tight, but it's not too bad. Uh, my hair does brush up against the headliner as well. No connectivity back here. On higher trims, I'm not sure if they give you anything else, but um, it is what it is on that. You have one map pocket. Other than that, there's not really too much else going on. You move to the side, lower this, you have a cup holder and an armrest. It's pretty nice and soft. Reminds me of my Accord, actually. And the seats, you have the same leather with that Alcantara center, which is my favorite portion of this car, probably. But other than that, there's not too much to talk about here. Like, I don't know. Enjoy the drive, though. That's what's next. All right, everybody. So quick notes on the interior as well. One thing I didn't mention before. Um, you had 10-way power adjustable driver seat, and you have 4-way power passenger seat only on the higher trims and on manual on oh sorry um, on the base trim you have manual seats and also on the base trim you have leatherette instead of uh, actual leather so um, it seems like if you're looking at the dial x you want to get everything except for the base trim if those things are important to you um, now i've already talked about you know how everybody i think no one really likes the dual screen interior for the older acros i'm not a big fan either i'm like i'm, I'm okay with them I, I prefer the newer one much better obviously like the new uh, rdx tlx and the new mdx that's soon to come um i don't know like for what you pay like how much more difference is it than a 10th gen civic touring right you can get that cheaper it has pretty much the exact same thing um you can get a turbo option on that uh like it's just it's just not a whole lot of like do i really need to get an ilx um and i'm not trying to you know uh you know talk down on the car i think it's a pretty it's a, i'm sure it's a reliable car it's that 2.4 engine that's naturally aspirated so if you don't want a turbo it's a perfect vehicle for you um i just think waiting for the next generation or the next model because there's rumors they might cancel this and come out with a whole new compact or subcompact uh, sedan and there's also rumors that they're gonna uh, hopefully you can hear me hello hello um, and there's also rumors that they might type s that model as well so i don't know you tell me what you think because um, here's the pricing on this thing right base msrp here in canada is about 32.7k and in america it's about 25.9 um, the highest trim MSRP is about $38.1 thousand dollars in Canadian. Um, in America, that's just a hundred dollars shy of $30,000. Oh, it's so dark over here. Holy, uh, sorry about that. Don't worry, I got this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Competition, Audi A3, Mercedes-Benz A-Class slash the CLA, BMW 2 Series, the Honda Civic Touring, the Mazda 3 even. Those cars are definitely competitors for this car. Until the next model comes out, the next evolution of this vehicle, I think those are, even the Civic and the Mazda 3 can compete with this thing. Um, and maybe even be a better value. It's kind of cannibalizing Honda, you know, from within, which is kind of surprising. But um, anyways, um, I, you know, I'm gonna show you guys the driving portions next. I'm gonna show you from, from the outside so you have a better view as well and not see my lightly dimmed face uh, but anyways, yeah, let's move on to that. All right, guys, time to do the last portion of every road test, which is driving the vehicle. I'm just gonna let you guys enjoy it. Sorry for the really shaky video. I did mess up, I forgot a tool at home. Hopefully you don't feel like you're gonna get nauseous from watching this, but um, first things first, let me get to an empty road so we can do an acceleration test. Right now, it's in sport mode, as you can see. It'll shift a little faster, and we are going to see how fast this thing can go. Three, two, one. Hmm. So it shifts very nice, not gonna lie. And you guys heard that audio. Um, some of that might be obviously muffled in through uh, the speakers, but I really don't mind it. I think it sounds nice. I think if you're an enthusiast, any car that has a nice sound sounds good. Um, obviously, you can see the lights look really nice on this. Turn, turn them off. You can notice that it gets pretty dark with them. 
actually you can't even notice that on the camera to be honest but here's the high beams the interior there's nothing really to show in terms of the lighting it's just basic there's no interior ambient lighting available um, you can control the brightness of this by this dial selector right here um, but other than that it is it is a pretty it's a pretty fun car to drive in my opinion it sounds nice you have some paddle shifters right here and you can hear how it sounds and if you want to make some quicker downshifts there you go the brakes feel good too with those aluminum accented wheels slows down quite a bit look at that that sounds nice doesn't it i wish we had more twisty roads here guys but i have not too much to show you for some reason let's make a left over here Vroom. You know what? Almost a 6.6 .6 second uh, 0 to 60 time. It's definitely not bad at all. What's crazy? What's crazy? If this 6.6 .6 second 0 to 60 is accurate, it's kind of a shame that that brand new TLX, the 0 to 60 and uh, 6.5 approximately from a few different tests. Um, if that is the case, if those numbers are confirmed for this and that TLX, like that is uh, really surprising. Obviously that car weighs a lot more too, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I hope the Type S of that model obviously gets quicker, but I'm hoping the next, you know, evolution of this vehicle gets better as well. So. Anyways, uh, sorry for uh, not being able to upload consistently, you guys. Uh, I'm trying to get access to vehicles. Um, I'm obviously not a big YouTuber. Everybody that has subbed recently, I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot for your support. You guys are the best. Um, obviously, you guys know I reach out to dealerships and try to you know, get them to, to be partners and we can work with them in getting more vehicles so I can film and show you guys more. Um, so subbing would really help. If you guys enjoy this content, please do sub, leave a like. Let me know what you think of this ILX or what you don't like. Um, and let me know what kind of vehicles you want to see next because I'm definitely trying to do my best here to uh, get access. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Peace.